and just make sure you come to class and you give me one of those beautiful smiles because I love to see all my students smile and just be happy. That makes me happy and that makes it all the while. everyone welcome back to my channel and to vlogmas day 19. today's december 19 2017 and i am going to tackle today with a positive mindset and just thinking of all the good things that are happening right now in my classroom and in my life as a teacher and just focus on that i know that yesterday i was feeling overwhelmed and stressed out but i want to change my mindset and focus on small things that i can change and that I can focus on instead of just getting anxious over the big picture. So I'm going to try today to, no, I'm not gonna try because Yoda says, do or do not. There is no try. Anyway, that was my worst impersonation of Yoda. I don't think he'll be proud. But anyway, I am going to tackle a couple of things today. I'm gonna call it my big three that I want to accomplish today. So, I'm going to write those down. Maybe I'll include the little note in the vlog. So I'm going to do that. I'm also this morning because it's only, Fitbit doesn't wanna help me sometimes. Okay, 7.43 right now. So I have about 45 minutes before the students come in, actually a little bit more than that, more than 45 minutes. But I have a little bit more than that to kind of work on, um, changing the names on the desk because as you saw yesterday in my video I wrote their names on their desk with an expo marker but the names on the desk are the old seating chart and i was waiting to see if i could just have them change their seats when they come in but in all honesty i'm just going to clean out their desks i'm going to write their names on the new desk where they sit so as soon as they come in they find their name and they sit there. And if there's any personal items that I find inside their desk, I'm just gonna put them on one table in the room so that anybody can come and claim their things because they're really not supposed to leave personal items in their desk since we share desks. I have two classes. So usually what I do is I have my homeroom use the left side and my other class use the right side. So I wanna make sure that they get back into that organizational system so that the only things in their desk should be their textbooks. And that's it. All right, so um, that's one of the things that I'm gonna do today. The other thing that I wanna do today is catch up on grading because I don't wanna take anything home over the winter break. I don't wanna have to grade anything at home. When we come back from winter break, we literally have about a week, a week and a half before the grading period ends and grades are due. So I don't wanna come back in January and be stressed out because I'm behind in grading and I gotta get all this grading done so that's my task so today I'm going to attempt to grade at least one subject I, I do give grades for language arts reading and social studies maybe I'll just tackle language arts make sure that both classes grades are caught up with language arts so that that's good and maybe tomorrow I can start focusing on reading and then social studies so that by Friday, all the grades are updated and I don't have to catch up on grading when I come back. I just have to grade whatever we do that week when we return on January 8th. So those are the things that I am planning to do today. So we'll see. I also have to do a little bit of organizing since our party is tomorrow. So I need to clear up my kidney table again because it's all full of books and stuff that we got from Donors Choose, which also need to be stamped. So there's a very long, to-do list, but I'm gonna tackle three things today. And if I accomplish three big things today, I'm gonna be super proud of myself and pat myself in the back. So yeah, before I move on to going to 
set up their desk and all that stuff. I wanted to do an unboxing of my Alcrate monthly subscription box, which I got this weekend. I subscribe to Alcrate. This is a monthly subscription box for book lovers and readers. Um, this one happens to be more young adult type of books, but I'm gonna show you some of the things that are inside. And I featured this in my very, very first YouTube video. Uh, which I published on September 23rd. But I want to show you what I got. And this was a nice little treat for myself. It was like getting a present. So I really enjoy it. So let me show you what I got. So when you open it, this is how it looks on the inside. And... Ooh. So the first thing in the box is this candle and it's from novelly yours and this one is called the dreaming tree now this is really cool so let me show you a little bit how that looks like and this is a wishing candle so the way that they describe it in the box because they do include a little card they include a little card and they kind of tell you spoiler warning they kind of tell you a little bit about what each item is in the box so this one happens to be a candle with a delicious crisp apple scent mixed with a hint of magic and look it has glitter so basically it says light your candle and whisper a wish into the night so this is a soy candle inspired by the book the names they gave us by emery lord so um it smells delicious so i'm planning on using this actually during winter break i haven't lit it yet but I'm going to put it in my bedroom and maybe once a day I'll light it just to kind of do a little bit of mindfulness and meditation, make a little wish like it says, and then turn it off because I, I want it to last. This is a delicious smell. I really love it. The other thing that was in this box is this awesome tote bag inspired by Harry Potter. So I love, hold on, I'm tangled up in the bag. Okay. So it has the lightning bolt on one side and then on the other side it says don't let the muggles get you down and it's a quote from ron weasley so this is so appropriate to what i've been going through this week and how i was feeling yesterday sanchez don't let the muggles get you down and if you need that in your life don't let the muggles get you down okay we also got this magnet button and it says, if my life is going to mean anything, I have to live it myself. And this is a quote from Percy Jackson because Rick Riordan, the author is on down here and you see the trident for Neptune. So that's that or Poseidon. Uh, they gave us a little button with the same image that was in the little card. So another button. This is an ornament and it says, love is everything everything and on the back it says life is a gift don't forget to live it these are such so inspirational they also gave us this really cute by the way i love owls owls are life i love a lot of things i cannot make up my mind i'm very i'm very bad at making choices and choosing one thing because there's a lot of things that i just love but how cute is this this is actually a planner and what I love about this planner is that it doesn't only just have the calendar like all planners do. It has this page where you can write favorite books. And, of course, it has the month. And it's pretty blank, so you can fill it in. So it's not actually dated. You can fill in the dates yourself. And it has a book log where you can log all the books that you're reading in that month. And notes from the book. Now, the notes that I like to take from books is actual quotes that speak to me. So I will keep a list of those quotes. So, and what I love is they have these little cute owls all over it and little quotes. Like this one says, you found me in a constellation. And this is by Francesca Sapia from Eliza and Her Monsters. So again, every month has a book log and a page for book notes. And I just love this. This is like so nice. I'm gonna be using this because I'm a book lover. And of course, then after that, it has a weekly planner, so you can plan different things, and it has a to-do list and a reading list, along with a note section, and I think this is amazing. This is pretty good, and I can put it in my tote bag, and in my tote bag, I can also put a book that I'm currently reading, 
Although I'm currently reading some books on Audible just because I just haven't had the time to sit down with everything that I'm trying to get done and accomplish. So on my drive to school and on my drive back home, I just put on Audible and I listen to a book. I started using Audible recently when I tried to get my son into reading Ready Player One, which I read during Hurricane Irma in literally one day. And the movie's coming out, I think, in March, directed by Steven Spielberg. I really love the book. I can't wait to see the movie, but we all know the movies are not exactly like books, but some movies are pretty good when they're inspired by books. So I'm crossing my fingers that it's really good. So we listened to Ready Player One. I had actually read it with the book in my hand. Um, and then I heard it or read it again through Audible along with my son. So that was great. It was narrated by Will Wheaton and he was an amazing narrator. So what I did was two weekends ago when I went to Disney, because it's a long drive, I decided, you know what, I'm going to read another book, which I've been meaning to read for a couple of summers now, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. So I was able to read that book that weekend and it was really great. Then I watched the movie... Good morning, teachers, <laughs> administrators, and back to a regularly scheduled program. So I really loved it. The movie was okay. Um, obviously, the movie, again, it's not going to be as good as the book. There were some things that they changed in the movie that were not part of the book. One of the things, and this is not spoiling anything. I hope not. I don't think it is. Uh, one of the things they changed is the main character in the book, Emma, she... Um, her peculiarity is fire. She can make fire out of her hands. And Olive is a levitating girl. But in the movie, they make Emma be the levitating girl and Olive be the one that wields fire. Why did they make that change? I don't know, because I'm not a producer or a screenwriter. They have their reasons. But anyway, after reading that, and that's part of a three book series. So after reading that book, I started reading the second book, Hollow City also by Ransom Riggs. So I'm listening to it right now. I was just listening uh, to it this morning on my way in, which is why I got to school like around 7.05ish, but I stayed in the parking lot for like 20 minutes just listening to the book. And it's getting pretty good. It's like, oh my God, now I feel like we're starting to reach the climax of the book. Like everything's like, the action is starting to pick up a lot more. So I can't wait to continue listening to it on the ride back home. And of course, after I'm done with that one, I'm gonna have to read the third one. Back to the owl crate. So anyway, here is a bookmark, and I love this bookmark. I should laminate it because it just, it's amazing the messages that are on both, both sides. Again, these things come from books. So this one is, this one says, if you're going to live, you might as well do painful, brave, and beautiful things. That's beautiful. And this is from The Serpent King by Jeff Zentner. And on the back, it says, and in that moment, I swear we were infinite. And this is from The Perks of Being a Wallflower, Stephen, Sh Stephen Chbosky. Oh my God, Stephen Chbosky. Stephen Chbosky, isn't that the guy who directed the movie Wonder? I think it is. I think it is. But anyway, here's the bookmark. This is the one from The Serpent King. The Serpent King. And this is the one from The Perks of Being a Wallflower. So this is really nice. I like book quotes because, especially book quotes that speak to me. This one is just a little, it looks like a bookmark, but it's talking about the book Lucky in Love, a novel by Casey West. And on the back, it gives you a message from Casey West to all Alcrate readers. She wanted to say thank you for so much support for her book, P.S. I Like You, which is a book that I got in a previous All Crate box. I haven't read it yet. I gotta read it. And her latest book is Lucky in Love. So yeah, she is recommending the readers to read her new book. And we have an exclusive excerpt from the book available on a website. So that's pretty cool. Then we get in the All Crate, every All Crate has a hardcover book. This one is Foolish Hearts by Emma Mills, and this is an exclusive cover, and they kind of show you, where is it? Where is it? Oh, I can't find it. I saw it somewhere, somewhere. Where did I see it? Here it is. In this little book, they explain a little bit about the items that are inside, along with 
um, information about the author that they're featuring in the book. So here they show you what the cover looks like for anyone that buys it at the bookstores or to Amazon. And then what the cover looks like for, um, this is the regular cover that you would get from the book. But for I'll Create members, this is how the cover looks. So on the back, there is a little letter from the author and there's also a patch call with the title of the book, Foolish Hearts. So that's pretty much it. And then they give you a little preview. They give you a little preview of what next month's box is gonna be the theme, because every month has a theme. Fearsome fairy tales is fearsome fairy tales. I love fairy tales. Fearsome, it reminds me of A Tell Dark and Grim by Adam Gitwitz. By the way, I met Adam Gitwitz in person. When my son was in fourth grade, which was six years ago, he was able to Skype, his class was able to Skype with Adam Gitwitz because his teacher was able to set it up. And then in, in fifth grade, because he looped with the same teacher, in fifth grade, she was able to put a donor's choose together and invite Adam Gitwitz to come to our school and talk about A Tale Dark and Grim. At the time, he had only written the first book, A Tale Dark and Grim, and was in the process of finishing the second book in a glass grimly. So he was amazing. The book is gory and... A little scary but it's for kids and I like it so I'm thinking of that as I see fearsome fairy tales so let's see let's see what next month's I'll create will be so that's it for I'll create as I put everything back inside my trusty handy box and I'm getting ready to now go to the social committee breakfast that they're having for us so I will check back with you sometime Oh, I have planning time today. I will check back with you hopefully during planning time, if not sometime during the day or at the end of the day. So I'll see you later. Stick around. Mm. Great job. Oh my God. How cool. Yes, I like to see your plans as well. Look what a great idea. Very nice. I'm done. Very nice. Great job. I can see the hard work and effort that you guys put in this, and it pays it's off. The it's the web. And this is the text evidence, and then that's the conclusion, their opinion of what makes the Elaboration. Leader, what makes it really Perfect. <laughs> We're on the right track a little bit. Yeah. I, mean. I have to come in and get another study from you later. So I think I found a new place for my essential oils diffuser right on top of my old projector that no longer works and they haven't removed it yet. And I think I like it here because it's more central to where the classroom is. And I think maybe the smell would spread throughout the room more and the students can really smell it better. So we'll see. <laughs> I just put it up there. Let's see how it works. So it's my planning time right now and I wanna show you what I've been working with the students so far this morning for their winter packet. We went ahead and we read the prompt and I had them unwrap it along with me. We did APT one, two, three. So A stands for audience, P stands for purpose, T stands for task. And if this prompt doesn't say who they're writing to, then I tell the kids automatically the audience is a teacher. The purpose is based on what type of essay they're writing. So it's informative, so this to inform. And APT is as easy as one, two, three. So one is they circle the essay keyword. Two is they underline the topic of what they need to write about. Not the topic that connects all the passages, but the actual essay topic. And that belongs to the task. So T is for task that connects to the topic. So they need to explain how characters learn from poor decisions. And three, is it a one part or a two part prompt? In this case, it's a one part prompt. They only have to address one thing in their essays. Then what we did is, this is the graphic organizer that the district provides for us. I just retyped it so I can include the prompt up here. And again, we did the one, two, three. And then what is the topic they're reading about? Is decision making? What type of essay they're going to be writing? Is informative because they need to write an informative essay explaining. Um, based on that choice above, what are they expected to do? Since it's informative, they need to identify the controlling idea about the topic that I read about. And I asked them, what is the controlling idea? It's basically another word for main idea. Is this a one part prompt? Check, that's a one part prompt. If the prompt is a one part prompt, what is it asking me to do? So again, explain how characters learn from their poor decisions. 
It's not a two-part prompt, so I had them cross this out, and then they had to paraphrase or write in their own words what the prompt is asking them to do. So one of the students says, use information from the two stories and explain how the characters learn from bad choices. All right, so then we went ahead and we started reading the first passage. I had them number their paragraphs because it's just easier when they're referring back to the evidence in the essay to mention maybe the paragraph they got the information from. And we went ahead and went back and started underlining and making annotations that we're going to use in our essay for evidence. So I want to eat those cookies, cakes, and candies that support decision, and we'll go over what the effect of that is on the next page. So the effect of the poor decision, see, effect of the poor decision. The pleasure Piggy felt suddenly turned to discomfort as Piggy was out of shape and had no energy to chase Little Red. So that's the effect of the poor decision. Then I told the kids, you know, you might not want to write poor decision out all the time. So let's make a, a key. So good decision is GD, poor decision is P, PD. So that is the PD, the effect of the PD. And then here is the, another poor decision. He still wanted fudge. And then he learned from Little Red that when you eat healthy foods like vegetables and fruit, they, he'll feel better. And that's the good decision or the, good, or the GD. She also added that he needed to exercise and that exercise gives you strength and, and energy so you can run and play. So this is the good decision, good decision, and this is the effect of the good decision. All right, so then we asked, what was the poor decision? Piggy wanted to eat on healthy foods like cake, candy, and cookies. We can include fudge. What's the effect of the poor decision? Piggy didn't have energy and was out of shape. And what did he learn? So Piggy learned to eat healthy and exercise so he could have more energy and not be out of shape. He also had another poor decision that he made, which is he tricked Little Red in the first place, pretending to be her grandma. The effect was that Little Red ran for her life. And the lesson he learned was don't trick people, just ask. Because in the end, she says, please don't trick me again. Uh, just join Granny and me for a healthy lunch. So we went over that. And the questions the kids will answer on their own. And then we started reading The Three Little Mice. So we went over here, and this is the lesson that they learned. So that's the lesson learned. And again, this is the effect of the lesson learned and the effect of the good decision. So this is the good decision, and this is the effect of the good decision. And we didn't finish because the kids had to go to music. But when they come back, we're going to go and look for, we're going to look for the bad decision that was made, the poor decision, and continue to uh, gather our evidence. My goal is to make sure we do the annotations for that story as well and then gather the evidence from both, both sources. And finally, before they leave today, hopefully, they get to um, plan out what their essay will be, whether it's two ideas they're going to write about or three ideas. But um, I'll show you how this looks when we're done with it. So that's basically what we've done today so far. So it's now lunchtime. So let me show you really quickly what I packed for lunch today. So this right here is a 50-50 spring mix and baby spinach mix. And I put some grape tomatoes. And these are shredded carrots. And in my dressing today is the balsamic ginger dressing from Mikado. And this is some ground turkey breast that I made zucchini, tomatoes, mushrooms, and spinach with tomato sauce. And this is what I used to eat yesterday for my zoodles, my zucchini noodles with this. But I'm having this today with my salad. Let me show you what I have for snacks for today. So one of the snacks that I packed today is one that I shared before in a previous vlog. This is just boar's head traditional hummus. This is cucumber, and these are the Applegate uncured turkey pepperonis. This right here, I believe this is three points and this is one point on Weight Watchers. So this is a four point Weight Watcher snack. And this, this is one of the containers that I bought in one of the vlogs that I filmed recently. And this is basically a nice little snack container from Sistema. These are strawberries. And what I have here is the Boar's Head Dessert Hummus uh, Chocolate. It tastes like brownie batter. But this is only three points. So this is a three point snack right here. And my lunch is actually zero points. This is zero points because now ground turkey breast is zero points on Weight Watchers. And the rest is vegetables and vegetables are zero points. And I really didn't use oil in this. So, um, and this is zero points. It's just this dressing is two points. So my whole entire lunch is two points. 
And yes, my snacks are more points than my lunch, but I'm okay. I also have two cuties with me. And this is my brand new water bottle that I got from Charming Charlie when I went on Sunday. I love kitty cats, how cute. And it's glass, so I'm so excited to have this bottle. Love it. So that's pretty much my food for today, minus the other two snacks that I showed previously. So it's the end of the day, and I gotta make this quick because my battery is running kinda low. But before I sign off today's vlog, I wanted to share a little bit about some of the gifts that my students have started to bring in for the holidays for me. And I'm so excited to get gifts. I mean, who doesn't like to get gifts? So I have a couple of bags here and I'm going to unbag them and show you what my students got me so far. And tomorrow's a holiday gift exchange, so it's gonna be good. And the gift is a book, sorry, I meant to say holiday book exchange. So tomorrow is our holiday book exchange. So the students are going to exchange books and the teachers included themselves too, so that we can give a book to a student and a student may pick us and we get a book from them. So in this little bag here, got some red tissue paper and it's a BB-8 snow globe and it says bomb book. <laughs> It's also a piggy bank, so you can put coins in here and it has a little slot for you to open, but how cute! It's BB-8! And if you are new to my channel and you're watching this video for the first time, welcome! Why am I excited about BB-8? Because I love Star Wars. And my students know I love Star Wars, so they're giving me little gifts. So let's go ahead and open this bag to you for me. And now it's green tissue paper! Whoops. <laughs> this is probably going in the blooper reel. All right. It's a notebook and it says, coffee doesn't ask silly questions. Coffee understands. Yes. And she wrote a beautiful letter for me inside. It says, Miss Sanchez, thank you for being there for me, for understanding me when I'm sad, helping me when I don't understand questions and being my teacher but I am proud of calling you my teacher, but even more proud of us being friends. God bless you. Oh my God, how adorable. And look, the pages are white, but the edge is like this red, like neon red color. How adorable is that? I love notebooks. So um, one of my favorite things to get for gifts is notebooks. I love stationery, I love notebooks, I love pens, all color types. And this is some, Covered espresso beans, dark chocolate. Yum. And a candle. Look how cute this holder. It says vanilla bean, 100% soy. Oh my goodness. It smells like cookies. Oh, it's so yummy. So thank you, thank you for my beautiful gift. By the way, candles. Candles is another nice gift to um, give teachers as well. And I do like the vanilla um, scent. I also love scents that are ocean related. So those are really yummy too. All right, next gift. Pink tissue paper. White tissue paper. Beautiful card, which I already read earlier. And it's a mug. And it has Star Wars. Oh my God, this looks like um, The Empire Strikes Back with The Return of the Jedi. It's a combination, but this is like the original Star Wars. And these are candies. These are cherry hard candies. Yummy. And a cute little snowman bag. Ooh. All right, so that was gift number three that I received today. Let's go to gift number four. How adorable is this bag? Red tissue paper. All right. Okay. So it's a little bag. It's wrapped up. So let's see what's in here. Mm -hmm. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Oh, how pretty. It's jewelry and it's like beautiful stones and they're in the shape of a heart. How cute is that? That's very cute. And there's a card. 
Christmas blessings. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. So there's another thing inside this bag. Let's see. It's a little box all wrapped up with a nice little bow. All right, let's see what's in this box. It's a musical mug. How cute is that? It says, pick me up, I'll play a tune, put me down, and I'll stop. <laughs> How adorable. So basically, it's a mug, and it has these cute little ducks, all dressed up in the winter holiday season kind of get up. And basically, when you pick it up, it starts playing music, and when you put it down, it stops playing music. How adorable is that? Thank you so much. So it's like I got two gifts in one bag. That's awesome. All right. One of my students made this handmade Christmas card, which I love. It says, good luck on your channel. <laughs> my students are the best. They're like my best followers. They're, they're like my fans, and I, I love you. If you're my student or you were my student and you're watching, shout out to you guys, everyone out there. Love you all. Much love. And inside is a Amazon gift card. Yes. My favorite. Thank you. And the last gift, snowman. Red tissue paper. Okay, first, oh my God, how adorable is this? Look at this lollipop. That is so cute. There's a card in seat in here. Wishing you holidays merry and bright and a wonderful new year to come. Thank you. Oh, wait. How adorable is that? That is so adorable. That's really cute. Okay, so let's see. Ooh, something that's wrapped up in here. Oh, how neat. It's a Michael Kors bag. How beautiful is this purse? Oh my God, I love it. Thank you so much. This is like the best. It's like, oh, Christmas came early. I feel so blessed. Uh, I'm like, and I don't feel blessed because I'm getting gifts because this is just a perk. But really, what I tell my students, especially those that I'm like, oh, I haven't gotten you a gift. I'm like, guys, just make a nice, beautiful handmade card. And that's enough. And just make sure you come to class and you give me one of those beautiful smiles because I love to see all my students smile and just be happy. That makes me happy. And that makes it all the while. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up so it's available to other teachers that might find this video interesting to them. Also, don't forget to leave a comment down below and subscribe along with hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. And I'll see you tomorrow for Vlogmas Day 20. So it's going to be exciting. I can't wait. Have a beautiful, magical day and don't forget to smile.